Hello, this is Jeff Robertson with Penton Audio USA and this is a short tutorial video on how to connect and configure your Terracom IP audio streaming and control system. Now, A couple of things to keep in mind with the Terracom suite of products. One is it is a TCP IP based system. Most of the devices except for anything with an integral amplifier is powered via PoE and most of the devices also come equipped with a plug-in power supply if you need to power it local or PoE is not available. Another thing to remember is all communications and control signals between all the various Terracom devices is conducted over layer 3 which means that you can run over multiple networks, gateways, firewalls, etc. on layer 3 which is also easily managed, isolated, and controlled by the IT personnel on site. So that's a important thing to keep in mind and it is also SIP based. You do not need a SIP server. It will operate with uh, an onboard SIP server if there happens to be one at your installation or can run independently of a SIP server where they all act as their own SIP servers across the network. And I'll explain a little more about that here in a bit. But right now let's just get you started since you have your new Terracom device how to physically connect to it get into the programming and make some global changes that you would have to do with just about every Terracom device that you buy. Let's get started. Okay, before we get started, keep in mind all the programming and software inside the units is HTML browser-based software. There is no separate software package or anything you need to download from our website or the internet. Just use your Internet Explorer that you happen to have on your computer. One note about the Internet Explorers. I like to use Mozilla Firefox. That is highly recommended. That or Chrome. Both work great. Internet Explorer from Microsoft, however, is not suggested or recommended for whatever reason. Sometimes there are fields that don't have all the values afforded to your options or sometimes even values or selected fields aren't even visible. I have no idea why that is, but Internet Explorer seems to have that issue, but there's no issues with and in the other browsers, especially Mozilla Firefox or Chrome. So please use one of those to make sure you don't have any griefs or have to call our tech support. So I will open up my Mozilla Firefox browser. Okay, and we're all set. So we will enter in the IP address. I have an FDX, a full duplex IP module here connected up to my switch. So I will enter in the default IP address of the Terracom. They are all the same. They are 192. Dot one sixty eight dot one hundred dot one. Now I've already set up my IP address in my computer, so I'm in the same family. Make sure you set your computer up for a static IP in that same family. I'll hit enter, and this is the login screen. Every Terracom device that you have on your system or you try to log into will have this exact same look and feel and the same login screen. When you get to the login screen, what you're going to see is up here in the upper right hand corner it tells you the model number of the device you're connected it also tells you the version of the firmware the software that's inside of the unit as well and it also tells you what the IP address of the unit is and I can see right here it's 192 168 101 which is the default so to log in the username is admin all lowercase and the ID or password is admin all lowercase as well we get to the main screen and once again the device type and the version of the firmware along with the serial number which is unique with the the unit will be displayed right here first thing you want to do is go over here to the setup one tab and we will click there and this is your main configuration screen or what we call our basic settings screen so right up here in this corner right here is the network settings you can set this up for dynamic host communications protocol by default it's disabled and it's set for static IP Here's the default one, and I want to change this to 205. And I'll leave the subnet mask and the gateways all the same. I could change the gateway here to 1. All right, and don't need to worry about the, the DNS. That's the network part. The serial is only if you're doing serial controls uh, for remote devices. We will not get into that. Uh, the system time, you can enable that, and you can actually set it live or you can have it actually grab it from your computer or a network time server. We won't go into that. 
And some of these other settings here are for third party or other advanced features which are in other videos. Over here to the right, the upper right hand side, is a couple of key things you need to keep in mind. One is the transfer protocol. It defaults to TCP. TCP is only good or only active if you have five or less devices in your system. The reason is because TCP is a higher secured handshaking protocol. So when it sends a package or a command out or a status command out, it's actually looking for confirmation from the other side to say whether it received it or not. This slows down all the transmissions. And if you have over five devices in your system, this can cause problems, especially with the audio streaming and control portion. You want to go UDP if you have five or more Terracon devices in your system. UDP means it blasts all the information out, but it's not looking for any confirmation back or handshaking on there, so it speeds up the communications. Also, the firewall transversal mode is defaults to Terranet. If you have no SIP server that is doing all the controlling and talking with the systems on the network, then leave it at the default Terranet. If you do have a SIP server, then you have to enter all the SIP server and the RTP port information and the ID um, here. But in Terranet, you don't have to do that. You just leave it at the default SIP port and default RTP port, and you'll be good as gold. The other one is username. The username defaults to Atis underscore and whatever the model number of the device that you're talking to or connected to. For right now, it's the FDX or the full duplex module. I want to change this because I want to say demo FDX. This username is important. It has nothing to do with the programming inside the device, but when you are using other devices, DSPs or Terra Manager management software or Terra server scheduling and routing software or any of the paging microphone stations, when you are mapping zones or buttons or images or whatever to this device, this will be the name that shows up in the list of devices. So if I had five FDX modules in five different buildings on my system, I'd want to give them unique names so I knew exactly which location each one was at. This is where you give that unique name right here. This is what will show up in the other list. That's all we're going to get into right now for the setups because a lot of these other settings are more advanced than for other activities that we'll describe in future videos. So once you finish all that, right at the bottom, to make sure all of these savings are saved and sent to the unit, all we do is click save at the bottom. Now since we changed an IP address on the unit, it's actually going to reboot the unit and kick me out. And then we'll get back in and I'll show you what that looks like now. There you go. Machine is rebooting. We got the countdown going up here. Now we've, we've been logged out of the system because it did reboot and go through its power cycle. So what I like to do is I like to go back into the system. And as you notice, I'm not even logged in, but it's already changed my IP address up here to 205 from the default one. So I'll log back in just to check to make sure all my changes took that I didn't do something wrong. I'll click on setup one. There you go. There's my changed IP address. There's my change number. I'm in UDP. So everything is set. So I don't want to make any more changes. I can just hit log out. And are you sure? Confirmation? Yes. And then I can close my browser and away we go. That is, in a nutshell, how easy it is to connect to any Terracom device, no matter what model it is. Change the IP, the subnet, the mask, and a quick couple of quick settings that you should address on every one just when you're getting started out of the gate. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website at Penton dash usa dot com thank you and have a terrific day